Going for the slam. Again. Well, hello, Gingles and Goblins, and welcome back to the channel. And if it's your first time here, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to start something new, Celebrity Graves. And I'm going to start something that I'm very passionate about. And my first Celebrity Grave will be none other than professional wrestling legend, the Russian bear, Ivan Koloff, passed away in eastern North Carolina in 2017. Today we're at Pinewood Memorial Park in Greenville, North Carolina, where he was laid to rest. So his real name was not Ivan Koloff. His real name was Orwell Paris. And we're going to see if we can find his headstone here at Pinewood Memorial Park here in Greenville, North Carolina. And along the journey, we'll tell you a little bit about the man, the myth, the legend that was the Russian bear, Ivan Koloff. So join us. If you dare. One, two, spooky five. So this is Pinewood Memorial Park in Greenville, North Carolina. So you know what's funny is even though Ivan played a Russian, he wasn't even Russian. He was actually born in Canada of all places. But as it goes in pro wrestling, they always give you a gimmick to play. And Ivan's gimmick was being a Russian. And that gimmick that he was given, he played it very, very well. He started his career in pro wrestling in 1965, and that career spanned nearly 30 years until he retired in the late 90s. Now, Ivan was a fantastic man. Ivan was the third ever, what is now known as WWE, world's champion. He became world champion in January of 1971 at Madison Square Garden when he defeated Bruno Sammartino. No! Oh, you can hear the pin drop. First time ever. We got a new champion. But on that fateful night, 1971 at Madison Square Garden, the Russian bear Ivan Koloff would pin Bruno become the world's champion. Now the stories I've heard is that the crowd was in such an uproar over that they immediately had to usher Ivan out of Madison Square Garden because the crowd was in a frenzy. They were ready to riot because you know this is this is the evil Russian guy and even though Bruno was an Italian he was basically America's hero at that time. He was the world champion and they were extremely upset that Ivan had just pinned Bruno after a seven year, which is unheard of, seven year world title reign. Now we're just getting off of Roman Reigns, almost four year world title reign, but imagine adding another three years to that. And that's how long Bruno had held the championship until Ivan defeated him in 1971. Now, Ivan wouldn't hold it very long before he would drop it to Pedro Morales. But nonetheless, Ivan can say he made it to the WWE world title. He started with WWWF, which was Capital Wrestling before that. And of course, the first ever champion was Buddy Rogers. I mentioned that Ivan was the third champion. Number one champion was Buddy Rogers. Number two was Bruno San Martino. And number three was Ivan Koloff. When Ivan first entered the WWWF in 1969, he was managed by none other than Captain Lou Albano. Now, everybody knows who he is. He reached the height of fame during the mid 80s with the rock and wrestling. Of course, he was featured in the Girls Just Wanna Have Fun video with Cyndi Lauper and just a iconic staple and pioneer for wrestling. But after Ivan dropped the belt to Pedro Morales, 
kind of floated around in the territories as they called it back then. You had WWWF, which would later become WWF, and then of course it would become what we know it now, it's WWE. After he left the World Wide Wrestling Federation, to spend some time in the NWA territories, Mid-Atlantic, Georgia Championship Wrestling, and he would win the NWA Tag Team Championship. Him and Ray Stevens would defeat the Mass Superstar, which later we all know was Bill Eady, member of Demolition. And the Mass Superstar was teaming with, just got raindrops on my shoulder. He was teaming with Paul Jones. Now you've got to remember this, okay? This is the, the wild, wacky world of pro wrestling. He won the belts with Ray Stevens by defeating the masked superstar and Paul Jones, the early 80s. However, Ivan's path with Paul Jones come full circle again towards the late 80s, around 1988. So after his tag team championship run with Ray Stevens, he basically started popping up on what I like to refer to as the TBS Saturday night edition of NWA, which would later become World Championship Wrestling. And of course there, he formed the stable known as the Russians. His, what they call, you know, wrestling KFAB nephew Nikita Koloff and Crusher Khrushchev. With us here at ringside to talk about that match, Nikita Koloff, he is an awesome force. None of these guys were technically related. It was just storylines for the wild world of wrestling. Of course, they all had these shaved bald heads and they all carried around the big dog collar chains and they, they definitely basically run roughshod over the entire NWA roster during the mid 80s and they were feared by many of the wrestlers you know they had feuds with the Road Warriors and the Rock and Roll Express and all the notable tag teams from back in the mid 80s and they made quite the name for themselves as being a feared stable. Ivan was a big guy he was 6'1 and 298 pounds so he was close to 300 pounds and he was a menacing force to mess with. But after the Russians kind of disbanded, fast forward to the NWA TBS Saturday Night Edition circa 1987, 1988, around that time frame. Well now, Ivan Koloff is a member of Paul Jones Army. Paul Jones Army featured Paul Jones basically is the stable leader, the manager. He was out of wrestling at this point, and he was basically just a manager. And his stable included Ivan Koloff and the Warlord and the Barbarian, the Powers of Pain. So they were a treacherous stable to deal with there in the late 80s on the TBS wrestling. Now, Ivan never really made it back to WWF any time in the 80s or the 90s. In the 90s, he made a few appearances in Smoky Mountain Wrestling, which was Jim Cornette's promotion, which was affiliated loosely with WWF back then. It was like a farming system for them. And he also appeared in ECW before it came Extreme Championship Wrestling. It was mainly known then as his Eastern Championship Wrestling. After the mid-90s, I believe Ivan found religion, and he retired actively in ring from the sport of pro wrestling. Of course now, late 90s, this is when everything became like TV 14 and it definitely became the attitude error. So maybe much like Ted DiBiase, it was a personal choice to kind of step away full time due to his beliefs. However, in the 2000s, that goes back to uh, working the independent scenes, and 
I'll tell you about one of my first times meeting him at a high school gymnasium independent wrestling show. As I already see, we're coming up upon his headstone right now. If you line up the exact location with what it looks like on findagrave.com, you kind of realize that that tree back there in the background looks dead in the picture, but you'll realize that the bushes over here off to the left kind of add up with it. And if we go right here, we will find Ivan's permanent resting place. You can see right there, he was born August 25th, 1942, and passed February 18th, 2017. And I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, the headstone doesn't say Ivan Koloff, but again, his real name was Oral Paris. He even went by that name briefly from what it says on Wikipedia. Just Oral was spelled a little bit different. At some point in his wrestling career. Now I can say this, I mentioned at the start of this video, Ivan was definitely one of the nicest individuals that you will ever have the honor of meeting. The wrestling industry, much like any of the entertainment industry, is full of people that are self-conceited and all for themselves. But Ivan definitely was a man for the people and you hear the term in wrestling all the time people's champion but Ivan definitely was a people's champion I saw him numerous times one of the first times I saw him was in 2006 he was at a, a local independent show as they call it in the wrestling community it's where you know new up-and-coming talent tries to cut their teeth and basically make a name for themselves and wrestlers that are past their prime and legends will come and make appearances sometimes wrestling sometimes just signing autographs and at this particular show in august of 2006 maybe july of 2006 sometime around the midsummer of 2006 was at a show in aden north carolina at the old aden high school not the one that they currently used for education and I was gonna try to get an interview with him now this goes back to a little bit of the Black Hearts Club history here me and Ashley at that time were doing this online news journal called Rock Journal Network RJN where we would do music reviews and get interviews with any celebrity we could we were just two young up-and-coming social media wannabes if you will in the mid 2000s at the height of everything youtube was just starting and we were just trying to make a name for ourselves but long before either one of us had families and i was going to try to get an interview with ivan koloff but his line to meet him and talk with him was extremely long so I just kind of took my seat and never got that interview with him but he definitely was a class act one of my last memories of seeing him was around 2013 and 14 he would always do work for like the Children's Miracle Network telethons and any kind of fundraisers he could to help out the youth around the area and just to do charitable donations. He was a good man. Again, I can't say anything bad about him. Every time I met him, he had a smile on his face. And even though I missed my opportunity to talk with him in 2006, in 2013, him and Nikita, his make-believe wrestling nephew, were at Kmart in Greenville, and he was there selling autographs and pictures, and 
Of course, being a huge wrestling fan, I could not turn it down. And he wasn't even asking a lot of money. I think it was like whatever you wanted to donate. It wasn't even that he was selling it. It was whatever you wanted to donate, he was going to use it for charity to go towards the money he was trying to raise to help the charity out. So we would have all these good fun talks about the 80s wrestling scene, what it was like to beat Bruno in Madison Square Garden for the world's championship. And because I had a shaved head and a beard at the time, his joke was always like, and he would put on his Russian accent for me, oh yes, 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 with your bald head and beard, I put chain around you and you be Russian with me. And he just had this way of just making you feel like you could have been one of the guys by just talking to him. He was that down to earth and a great guy. And the last time I saw him was 2014 at a restaurant called Parker's Barbecue in Greenville. And he was there with his wife and I just joked around with him and he said he remembered me from when we talked at Kmart, but I'm sure he was just flattering me. He met, met so many people along the way, but he definitely, again, he had that way of just making you feel very special. Just hope that one day this man ends up and takes his rightful spot in the WWE Hall of Fame. I think he got pretty close in 2014 when they did a DVD on the best of Madison Square Garden where Triple H, who had started trying to better the company, if you will, at that time, reached out to Ivan for comments, obviously, on the match between him and Bruno back in 1971. So Bruno made it into the Hall of Fame, which people thought would never happen, but Ivan's time in the Hall of Fame has yet to make it. But I'm pulling for you, Ivan. This is it. It's final resting place. Passed away in 2017, right down the road in Winterville, North Carolina, wrestling legend, wrestling Hall of Famer, no matter what the WWE history books say, whether you're in the Hall of Fame or not, you deserve to be, my friend. Rest easy. All right, guys, so that wraps up this video. Huge wrestling fans, so coming to pay my respects to Ivan Koloff. Definitely bittersweet. And they are doing yard maintenance out here now, so it's time for me to wrap this up because it's going to get messy and loud out here. So if you enjoy this type of content and you're new here, how about slashing that subscribe button? And if you're already a subscriber, how about commenting and telling us what you thought about this? We're going to be doing more celebrity graves coming up in the future. Matter of fact, in this same Pinewood Memorial Park in Greenville, North Carolina, the guy that started Hardee's, which is affiliated with Carl Jr.'s, is buried out here also. So that'll be coming down the line. So be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and all that stuff. And until next time, we'll see you on the dark side.